Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. What's up, coach? Are you looking for a way to elevate your off-season skill development? We'll look no further. With the Bology app, you can build a workout with our library or create your own content. Send that workout to your players, and then your players complete the workout by recording their session on their phones. You can monitor and encourage competition with our leaderboards for every workout. Bology offers player development solutions in the palm of your hands. Get your team started today by going to Bology.com for more info. All right, so I already, I already talked a little bit about the, our history and, and, and you being one of my former coaches, but you have been so successful at your school, and, and I think coaches have to be really conscious of their daily habits And so I'm always fascinated and kind of learning what do people do with their time? Because you and I have the same amount of seconds every day, but how we use them is really important. So what are some daily habits that set you up for success? Well, I wish I could say I was perfect with my habits. Um, One of one of my goals and as a New Year's resolution in 2023 was just to try to spend 23 minutes a day with the Lord. Mm. That's hopefully go up one minute a year for the rest of my life. So this is 24. (laughs) <laughs> um, but that's, uh, I, so I've got kind of 10 W's that define my day. If I feel, if I can get to the end of a, if the end of a day and say, man, it was a winning day. I, I checked the box on every single one of these 10 W's. And that was, uh, for me, I just gotta, I gotta wake up, <laughs> That yeah. sounds cool. but to wake up and try to do so worshiping that I try to, man, just sing. I love to sing songs. Hmm. I sing a hymn to my kids every night before we go to bed. Man, that's um, awesome. And I, I try to. I try to sing every morning when I wake up. Uh, I try to weigh myself. You know, I go as soon as I go to the restroom, <laughs> go weigh myself, and while I'm weighing myself, try to ask the Lord for wisdom. Um, so those are the first four W's: wake up, worship, weigh myself, ask for wisdom. And I usually let, go. Out- let me jump into the the with those first four because one, I, I go back to a comment you made: you're not perfect with your habits, and I think. And we know this, right? As coaches, perfection isn't the goal. In our faith, we're trying to be sanctified along the path, right? He's working in us to make us perfect, but it's never possible. That's not possible on this side of heaven. And I, but I feel the same way, man. Like I feel like if I'm not nailing like my goals for the day, that it's almost like a failure. And the same way that with our players. We don't want them to think that way. Like you're, you're with, you're working on your shot, trying to get it more efficient and faster. Yeah, but it's never going to be perfect. And accepting that, I don't know. Like I feel like you and I are similar in that. Like we're probably a little too hard on ourselves. The danger is when we feel like that. Well, I just screw it. The rest of the day is already a bust. Like no, like let's start now. One of my players, Jack, and I'm going to give Jack Borman a shout out here, and he would get a kick out of that. I don't know where he got this, but he said, coach, this would be good on a t-shirt. He say, you would say, is it one day or is it day one? Mm. Mm. And I was like, Jack, like, that's probably the coolest thing you've ever said. Right I love that. But yeah, like one day I'm going to do this or, hey, this is day one. I think even throughout the day, we can think that. Where did you get these 10 W's from? Uh, just my own. Man. Pathetic <laughs> need for, for, uh organization i I think i think it's awesome um (laughs) love that you wake up like with the worship mindset see when you wake up what song or what's in your mind Mm. and you know what like the more that i listen to worship the more that i'm in the word i wake up with one of those songs in my mind the more that i'm away from it i wake up with worry talk about other w's i wake up with worry Maybe I'm weary. No, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but uh, but you know, it's like I, I I think you're right on the money uh, with that. Having that connection, being in tune with the Holy Spirit like that, um, and, and then weighing yourself, man. Like it's like your bank account. Like when I was younger, I used to never check it, and I thought if I don't check it, it's not bad. You know, if it, I'm not in the red if I don't look at it, and the weight the, that that scale. Uh, as as I'm in a heavy stage right now. 
I've got to get back on to checking that to see what's happening with my body, depending on the exercise I'm doing, the food I'm putting in my mouth. Man, great start to the W's. Can't wait to hear the rest. <laughs> I try to drink 64 ounces of water before I before I get to school every day. Uh, mm, from before? The, before school. Yeah, that way every bit of water after that's just icing on the cake. Yeah. If I can, that's, that's usually my breakfast is two 32-ounce glasses of water. Um, so is I, that harder to do than it sounds? Like, because yeah. actually drinking that initially, much. Yeah. Initially, it's real yeah. hard. Yeah. And then after, you, yeah, I think your body starts to get used to it. And so I, the first three or four months I was doing it, man, I was, I couldn't, I was, I felt like I was in the restroom all morning long. Yeah. Every morning. Um, but it's, man, it's, I've found a lot of health benefits from it and it's just been, it's been really good for me. I try to tell my wife every day I love her. So I mm -hmm. see her early and then I try to spend time in the word early. And, uh, I can say that if I can get those 23 minutes this year, 24 minutes a day, yeah. then that, that for me feels good. Um, I try to I try to get a little workout in at some point, even if it's just getting the heart rate up a tiny bit. Yeah, went in for knee surgery on Tuesday. I played my last basketball game last night before this second. I had tore my ACL two and a half years ago playing ball at JCC. Tried the old Euro step at thirty nine, and <laughs> there she went. <laughs> That's the danger in the Euro step as you get older; is your knee will just continue continue to Euro in that direction. That's yeah. right. But I think we as coaches have to keep playing. I just yeah. I love to play. It's my favorite form of exercise. I I still see things as a player that help me as a coach. I try to officiate once in a while too. But I think officiating, coaching, and playing, if you're doing those three things, you're just seeing the game from a different perspective. And so I tell our players to do the same thing. Get out and officiate games, come to come to basketball camps and ref, and then do as much coaching for little bitty kids as you can. Man. So I just seeing it from all those vantage points helps you dial into certain things as a player or as a coach or whatever. Chapter That's really good. I, I love playing. I tell oh. players, I tell players all the time, like, guys, I love coaching you, but if I'm being completely honest, like I would still rather be playing. Yeah. <laughs> like I'd yeah. still I, I that 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 control over the competition and, and being able to actually influence, you know, what happens on the floor. I mean, know we try to, and I think you and I are similar in the fact that we actually want to take less control, give our players, empower them with more control. But uh, I was I've been playing or was in these three on three games in Dallas. Um, and it's kind of known as like the game and, and um, a Baylor, a Baylor guy, uh, Derry Stone has created this game in Highland Park and it's been going for 25 years. And I've played uh, really up until this man, the last six months, I was playing in it as much as I could. But I'm terrified of the moment that my knee goes my Achilles pops. It's never happened. I get lower back stuff all the time. I usually like tweak a calf after a couple of times. Like, I just, yeah. I feel like I feel better when I don't play, but I would love to keep playing. Um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Turning 40, I felt a diff I mean, I just, for whatever reason, everything seemed to, Yeah, it is, it is a magic number, unfortunately. And it makes LeBron's journey just even oh. more impressive when you get to this age. I'm 42, you know, getting to this age. It's like the fact that he is still doing that. Now he puts a million five into his body every year. You know, he's made an art, a science out of longevity. And, and yeah. but, you know. It really is, I mean, part of his greatness. I, I know there's yeah. those folks out there say that Jordan's the best ever. And I'm, I'm a LeBron fan just by – Mostly it's a selfish decision because he ended my high school career. That was the last game my high school career was against LeBron. I'm from Ohio. And so we played them in the final four. And that was the state the first kind of big game of his on a major scene was was uh there in the state semifinal. He was a freshman, I was a senior. And they we had, you know, thirteen thousand fans or whatever rocking. No way. Last. Yeah, I never time. knew that, man. Yep. So I so if he if I can say he's the greatest of all time, then it makes me feel better about my career being over like <laughs> premature. Uh, it's kind of like when people say, "Well, you know, the 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 state champs beat us." You know, right. it makes us feel, right. or makes them feel better. Right. At least the greatest of all time beat you. Finish your right. career. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was he like as a freshman? A freak. Yeah, he, yeah. I mean, his cousin Maverick Carter, who has done a lot of his promotional, I think, like the decision and some of those things that he's been maybe criticized for, yeah. are are due to Maverick, but Maverick's a master publicist and has mm. done a great job of, of partnering with LeBron and he, and as, as a senior on that team, Maverick Carter was Mr. Basketball in the state of Ohio and the best player. Oh, wow. on their team. 
Wow. Le- LeBron, LeBron and him were both really, really elite. And they had a whole cast of folks. In fact, uh, Drew Joyce, I think, just got the job. What was the – the uh, LeBron's high school coach was – Yeah. Made a little run there in the tournament. Come on, help me out. I'm, my brain's struggling. Um, but the, isn't it the school – I thought it was a school that the Seton Hall guy was at that, that they made a, a the the Peacocks. Is that the same school or no? I I should Man. know. Anyway, I, won, I mean they they won their first. I think they won their play in game. Yeah, and then the first round game, and then lost in the second round. And Drew Joyce though was a was a player on LeBron was a teammate of LeBron's who was on that staff who's now taken over as the head coach. They had a, a whole a neat little network of guys there that yeah. continued to have rich contributions in the game of basketball with their coach being a. Uh, a, a real terrific leader, but LeBron, I, I, uh, I had a shoulder that would sublex and come out of socket from time to time. And one time I, I didn't guard LeBron. I was too bad of a defender. I'm sure they put me on, on somebody where I could just kind of save my energy and try to do some things offensively. But he drove past me at one point. And I remember kind of reaching out to try to get a piece of the ball, you know, kind of dig and stay with my man. And my shoulder just went right out of socket. Oh. Him. He just took it right out. And I was like, I, I know that guy is, the number one freshman in the country, they had already donned him the king and all this kind of stuff in Sports Illustrated and talked about how amazing he was going to be. I, he, but he was at the time maybe six four, six five, and had kind of a slender build. I thought, man, there's no way I'm here. I'm benching two fifty. I'm in the prime of my athletic <laughs> career. I'm, I'm the, I was a nineteen year old senior. He was like a fourteen year old freshman. I'm like, man, there's no way this kid is going to be strong. With me. That's the one thing I got on him. Yeah, and he just pulled my arm out of socket oh. like I. Oh, it was pathetic. Hey, to your point right there, the fact that he was labeled the king at such a young age and it actually happened. Yeah. He actually did it. And in a way that like respected the game, never off court scandals or troubles. The worst thing he's done is open a school for kids. Like <laughs> like like that right there. The odds of it all happening that way, incredible. Yep. Yep. And, and it's because he beat you. That's right. That I catapulted his yeah. career. <laughs> he owes it all to me. <laughs> you got it. Yep. Yep. Any other W's? Um, trying to remember where I left off. I always, I always try to get the word. Water. The word. Yeah. That's right. I try to, I try to witness in some, some mm. form or fashion, carry on a gospel conversation with somebody at some point during the day. Uh, it's ideal if that's somebody who's maybe never heard the good news that God loves them and the, the fact that he puts up with a bunch of messed up derelict hypocrites like us and, and yeah. wants a relationship with us. Now just, that blows my mind. That's what drove me to Dallas. I graduated from Cedarville university. Having gone there, I got one scholarship offer coming out of high school to Cedarville university in NAIA division two school at the time. They're now in CAA division two, a couple, you know, five, four or 5,000 students. Wow. Great basketball experience. And uh, halfway through my playing career, I I started working at a church locally and just thought, man, I, I want to this 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 is blowing my mind that God would love me. I just had to get more of it. Ended up being a Bible major and uh, didn't wow. know what I would study, and just just could not fathom the fact that God would love a messed up guy like me. I just yeah. Yeah, my mind and uh, wanted to learn more about him, and so that's what brought me down to Dallas to go to Dallas Theological Seminary. And while I was going to seminary, met my wife, so uh, that put me here for the long haul, and then started working at St. Mark's. And, uh, man, I'm, yeah, it's been a, a cool journey, but basketball has been a huge part. And I'll, and I'll tell you too, like I thought about quitting basketball after myself when we were in college. Hmm. I thought, well, now that, now that I've, the Lord's got my heart, man, this is more important than anything yeah. I could do as a basketball player. And the president of the university pulled me into his office and he had been a pastor to church for 25 years. He'd been the president of Cedarville for 23, 24 years. Paul Dixon is his name. Amazing leader. And Paul, Paul pulled me into his office and said, look, Greg, you know, I, I love your heart in ministry. I heard you're not going to play basketball next year. I just want you to know I've been doing this for now for close to 50 years in some sort of full-time or parachurch ministry. And I'm telling you, it's it's great. I love the fruit I've gotten to see as a full-time man of the Lord, but you are a man of the Lord. What you're doing there in the basketball program is just as important. It's worship. Putting that piece of leather through that piece of iron, it may not feel like worship to you right now, but you're using the gifts God has given you wow. for his don't stop playing basketball. I cannot implore you enough. If I could stop being the president of this university, go back and play on that basketball team, I would exchange it in a hurry because I just, I, I think that what you're getting to do is such a unique opportunity for your life. And I'm begging you, please stick with it. And I, and I did. So my junior and senior year kept playing basketball and it was a phenomenal decision. 
And I woke up every day just thinking I get to wake up and worship with what I'm doing. So that's kind of the final W is I, I try to walk out of every, I try to, to walk onto campus every day and just say, look, I'm not working to make money. I'm not working to just grind mm. through nine to five. I'm working as a source of worship. I want to, I want to honor the Lord with everything I do, whether I eat or I drink, no matter how mundane it seems. And it's, it's for the Lord's glory. And so just want to work hard as under the Lord and worship him in that regard. Um, that's kind of the final W. Man, thank you for sharing all that. And I, I, I've talked with our guys quite a bit about what does it look like to be a believer and play sports and be competitive? Because there are times where outwardly you might think that those conflict with each other. Hmm. You know, like I, I, we're servant leaders and, and we're supposed to be kind and humble and, you know, lay down ourselves for others. And all of that is true. But I think also like we can pursue excellence in whatever we're doing. And if that is basketball, like excellence in glorify, like glorifying him with how we do what we do on the floor. But I love that idea of it being worship. It, it actually literally being something that pleases him. And I told my guys the other day, a, a story of being in Iceland. One of the few, few times I had just like this overwhelming way, overwhelming wave of that feeling of his presence, his pleasure in my life. And because, you know, some of us, I also am kind of jumping away. I also appreciate the fact of the witness piece, because like you at St. Mark's, like me at Faith, when you only surround yourselves with people that do claim to be believers, you know, and you're kind of only in those circles, it's really easy to never witness, Mm -hmm. to never venture outside and to always just be in your bubble. And maybe there's danger in that. Um, But um I'm, I'm drive. I'm in, I'm in Iceland and I'm dribbling up the floor and I get to about half court and it's like everything kind of slowed down and paused. And I just remember feeling as if like his pleasure, his smile and what I'm doing, how I'm doing it for him. I, I was, you know, at that point in my life, I was being a witness in a positive way. I remember one of my teammates saying like, Oh, you're a real Christian. And, and I remember taking it back, like, what does that mean? Well, it means that the believers he had been around, um, it's like that DC talk song uh, from back in the day where the the believers that say with their mouths but deny with their lifestyles, that's what an unbelieving world simply finds unbelievable, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and, I, and, and but that for that little moment I was, and, but to have that feeling and to think about that, like what what would it be like to, Jordan Peterson talks about the aim of your life, which you're always trying to move towards. What a great aim for every single day. I, th- I would feel like that would make me maximize everything that I do, everything that our players do. Um, so I love that idea. And I think I'm definitely going to borrow that, uh, not steal, because one coach said our words matter. And so we don't <laughs> steal, but we borrow. Um, I'm going to borrow basketball is worship and it's for his glory. Hmm. That's the hope. We'll see. I just try to put one foot in front of the other every day, lay a brick in that foundation. and Yeah. You know, let but, it be but that's where his grace comes in, too, like with our daily habits. When we're not perfect, when we do fall, it doesn't mean um, that we just throw it all away. We just continue. And uh, one, one pastor I like to listen to, he said there's no failing tests. Like when you're a believer, there's, just, there's a lot of redos, a lot of retakes. But we're all obviously not trying to continue in that path that we're in, but it's good. And you mentioned Jordan Peterson kind of just fixing your eyes on what you want your life to be defined by. And, and our word of the year this year was discipline. And that seems like kind of a generic athletic word that coaches are always throwing around discipline. But ultimately, the, at the root of that word is disciple. Right. And so mm-hmm. you're constantly asking, what am I what's discipling me? What am I putting my time and energy into? Because my my actions my what i'm reading what i'm what i'm watching on tiktok i mean those are discipling yeah. my yeah. every influence around me is a, is discipling me whether i choose for it where i think whether i think i am being discipled by it or not and so it's just like man how can i how can i make sure that my life is being discipled by the one who really loves me and has my best interest in mind rather than so many of the other things around me that i tend to give way more attention to than i should Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.